intoxicated second offense. You are facing up to a year in jail and or a $4,000 fine. You guys have worked out an agreement that they're going to Order in the court. reduce your case to a first. That avoids you from having to do five <coughs> days in jail. That's why that is important. So um, I want you to understand, even, gets, even though it gets reduced to a first, that's still two DWIs on your records. What happens on the next one? He's one to say. <laughs> you know how many times I hear that every day? Take a guess. Every time that you're asked. Every person that comes here for every case that we have on every week and every day of the 3,000 clients that we so-called have here, everyone says that. And the problem is, is that you never know when something catastrophic is going to happen in your life. A cheat, someone cheats on you, someone dies, and it makes you do something that you normally wouldn't do. The problem is, is that the law doesn't care. They still see too. And whatever happens in your life, even if you have a sip of alcohol and you get into a car and you get pulled over, all they care about is your record and how you look. And then now they're going to charge you with a felony DWI. And now you'll be facing two to 10 in the penitentiary. And I'm going to tell you, you don't have to be falling down piss ass drunk where you have urinated all your, over yourself. It doesn't matter. The slightest smell of alcohol with a little glazed eyes and your record you're looking at a lot of time in prison. You understand? Yes, sir. So what I'm trying to impart to you is that even if you have a sip of alcohol, I wouldn't get into a car because it's a humongous risk every time you drive. You give up a lot of rights by entering into this agreement. You give up the right to a trial, right to compel witnesses to test on your behalf, confront and cross-examine your accusers. If you're not a citizen, it's, there are immigration issues you can be deported excluded from the country they're not denied naturalization you give up the right to appeal once you plead guilty to this offense and you accept the probation you cannot change this it will reflect as a conviction and until the day you die is this what you want to do yes sir how do you how do you plead to the offense guilty or not guilty guilty your honor i will find you guilty and I will follow the agreement as far as I see it is. Is it one year or is it? It should be six months probated for one year. So it's 180 days in jail to be probated for one year. As part of the agreement, you will do a repeat offender DWI education class. It's similar to a class that it's just a little bit more intensive because it's a second offender class. Two victim impact panels, a TRAS, which is an evaluation to see what conditions you may need. If they say that you need intensive outpatient treatment, you must fulfill that as well. No drugs, alcohol, no breath test refusal, meaning that if you are in a car and you get pulled over and an officer asks you to submit to a breath sample, you must take it. If you don't, you're in violation of the probation. You must also have a guardian interlock as well. Is this how you understand the conditions? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions? No, sir. How do you plead to the offense of driving while intoxicated? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Yeah. I will find you guilty and I will send it to you the agreement. I'm going to suspend your license for one year. As per our conversation earlier, Judge, I'll file the occupational today or tomorrow morning. Does he have an interlock now? Yeah, he already has the interlock. Okay. Um, you know, understand that we lead the nation in DWI fatalities. So officers, they don't care if you're not pissed drunk. They don't just, if they smell alcohol, they see two DWIs on your record, they're going to make the assumption and they're just going to take you down. That's why it's so much easier. One button, 20 bucks will take you anywhere you want to go in the city. Call Uber. They should be your best friend. My, my client judge um, had unfortunate circumstances, which led to him having to drive. In this instance, but the problem is, is that if you kill a two-year-old kid, those uncertain, those unfortunate circumstances, no one cares about your unfortunate circumstances. All they care is the dead body on the side of the road. You know that I had a lady once I represented many moons ago, found that her husband was cheating on her in their bed, caught them in the bed in the act. So she goes out and decides, you know what? That stupid MF, I'm going to, she goes to the club, 
picks up the first person she can find in spite to try to cheat on, gets in the car, gets loaded at the club, takes off, and over there on um, West, no, it, was West but it was Hillcroft and Gessner, runs a light, kills the guy. She's now in prison doing a very lengthy sentence. What happened to make you do whatever it was? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the sky fell, your grandmother died, your spouse cheated. None of that matters. What matters is the end result. And that's why I try to impart to you how important that is so that you realize that. Because we don't want, we don't want to see you in prison. You know? Good luck to you, sir. Oh, well, hold on a second. We also need to find some fees and surcharges. Oh. So what do you do for a living, sir? Um, there's a DPS surcharge, and he has to determine whether or not um, you can afford to pay it. So he's going to ask you a few financial questions. What do you do for a living? I'm retired. Okay. From what? The Army and from Exxon Research. So you had a pretty good job while you were... Yes, sir. Okay. And I'll, I'm hired, Your Honor. Okay, so you'll be required to pay the fines and fees and surcharges, and I'll give him two years to pay, so it'll end up being like $150, $120 a month. Um, but it's reduced to a first, so it's $3,000 plus the core cost, and then two years to pay. All right, sir, best of luck to you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Judge. I see some more information. I need in a moment. Um, I